I recently wrote the first blog post for the new brand website on kisscode.com. I do want to expand the reach of this blog post and I did that. I manually copied over this markdown and title with and the image even to LinkedIn, to other blogging platforms like this dev platform medium and hash note and there's probably many more out there but instead of manually copy pasting the markdown the titles the images for every blog post to every platform we can use something more automated and that is rss and it's a standardized way to format your content. So the body, the title, but also the metadata. And because it's standardized, multiple tools can then uh, process, parse your content in a predictable manner. And then display the content on their website, however they choose to display it. It is and looks like XML output. XML is a markup language, just like we know HTML or Markdown. So I'm going to show you how to format my blog post into, in, into the RSS format. So then I can provide that RSS feed that I just created to multiple large platforms could be so medium hash note dev but could also be google or whichever source or big platform you choose to expand that reach i created a minimal api endpoint to expose that to format and expose that rss xml feed if i click execute we're getting an XML looking output, which contains the essence of my blog posts. So first we can see some information about the channel. That's more yeah, about the blog feed in general. So you could add a lot of metadata there about your brand, your title, description, all that. But I don't think that is the most relevant for our use case. I think what is more, more important are these items, which contain the actual essence of the blog posts. So I added the blog post ID as the GUID, and then the link the, as the canonical link. So that's actually gonna say, oh, it was originally posted on the kisscode.com blog. Then the title of the actual blog post, the description, publication date, last modified, so that's the created ad property, and then the last modified ad property updates, then the rights is some, yeah, is the copyright of that article. You could set that to the author of that article. Uh, content. Okay, so description is the summary, so I, uh, truncated that and then content is the actual full content so if you paste this xml into a an rss previewer you should see the title the description yeah as a preview as an html preview but what i'm going to do is i'm going to expose this endpoint publicly temporarily and see if the RSS feed preview URL, yeah, you can uh, parse it. So I do that with the ng-rock tool. And then it exposes the website on there. I'm gonna go to Swagger and index just to get the URL. I'm going to copy over and close that local one for now. Let's see, so now we've got this publicly exposed URL, which should return the XML. And let's try that. 
and then you see that it parsed correctly and you've got the title the description and the original link so i could now use that same url that i entered in this previewer to then tell dev the dev platform that you can periodically uh, scrape or fetch my blog post and then each time I publish a blog post then maybe with a slight delay it's going to add that new blog post to my stories to my written blog posts on this platform and Hashnode can do the same and Medium can do the same and all the other platforms that I provide with my feed URL so that's gonna be like saved as a draft in multiple platforms at once which saves me some time instead of manually copying over the markdown title image and canonical url and so on so let's take a look at the code i created an api endpoint slash rss provided that with a DTO inherits from the pagination request so we, and so then it's also important to so then we're getting those blog posts of course only the public ones not the drafts and we order by descending on the created at so the newest blog posts are at the top then to actually format those blog posts into the RSS XML format. Let's have a look. I'm using a package syndication from system.servicemodel.syndication. So we first set up the feed. You could have a title, a description. I left it out because, yeah. So either I had to hard code it or provide it as extra parameters in here. And then you also have the copyright, feed ID, base URI, and then the actual items. So we're looping over all of the blog posts and then just setting up that uh, data, ID, title, content, summary. So actual content and then the summarized copyright, yeah, to the author or to the website so kisco.com publish date is that created at and last uptime date is last modified at or the created at if it was never modified links so here i needed to add the alternate link um, to point to the kisco.com to the actual blog post and that will also be used as the canonical URL so the original link where the blog post was first created and then all I do is return a new RS as 20 feet formatter which will yeah, give us that nice XML output And then we need to be able to, instead of return JSON on our minimal API, we need to return XML. So I looked for an elegant way to do that. And uh, I found one on Andrew Locke's blog. And that is to create our own extension on the results. So normally you see results.ok or, or no content or that, this or that. And you can actually extend on this and create your own uh, results object. So we created XML. Let's take a look at that. And that's a class implementing iResult. I also put the source at the top. And then we are serializing that well, the content as the response body. And then we can write an extension method. Instead of having to type return new result, 
XML result, sorry, we can then use that results.extensions.xml. That is the most elegant solution that I could find uh, because the, all the other ones were synchronous uh, that all the sources used. If you found this video useful or valuable in any way, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button, subscribe to stay up to date with future videos. I'll make sure to publish another version to my Patreon. I hope I see you in the next video.